Now doctors artificially divide heart failure and they tend to talk about left heart failure and they tend to talk about right heart failure and when the two hearts fail together as they often do that's what happens in most cases both hearts fail together they then call it congestive heart failure so let's talk about each one in turn when the left ventricle fails they call that left ventricular failure, left heart failure. And that's reasonable, isn't it? And when the left ventricle fails to empty, all that blood is going to get jammed up in the left auricle. And behind that, in the pulmonary veins, and behind that, in the lungs themselves, the pressure in the pulmonary capillaries is going to rise, and edema and fluid is going to exude into the alveoli. Our patient's lungs are going to become waterlogged. They cannot oxygenate their blood, therefore. And they become desperately short of breath, gasping for air. A posh word for shortness of breath is dyspnea. And so the major feature of patients with left ventricular failure is dyspnea due to pulmonary edema. Right. Heart failure can occur on its own, rarely, comparatively rare, to the left side. And then we have to think of things that would do that on the right side. And the common things are like chronic lung disease, where the right ventricle has to work harder and harder and harder to pump that blood against the diseased pulmonary circulation. And it's not surprisingly that in time it will fail. Or you've seen patients walking around town or on the wards with the disease of the thoracic chest wall, the bending of the spine, kyphoscoliosis. Their right ventricle has to work harder because it has to pump blood against an abnormal pulmonary circulation. And it will fail. And the third main cause of right ventricular failure is an illness called the pulmonary emboli. An infarct that is patients are put in bed I need not bother telling you why patients are put in bed I mean if someone is desperately short of breath there isn't much else you can do except put them to bed and if someone is in bed and they have a poor cardiac output little bits of cloth will form in veins in the leg or in the pelvis will fly through the circulation go through the heart and land in the lungs and produce an illness called the pulmonary emboli an infarct and when the right ventricle fails to empty, all that blood is going to get jammed up in the right auricle. And behind that, we're going to have congestion. We're going to have systemic venous congestion. And we're going to have congestion of the organs that drain on the right side, like the liver. And we're going to have edema. But that edema is not going to be in the lungs, but in the dependent parts and body cavity. So if you're walking around, that means around your ankles. If you're lying in bed, that means around your lumbosacral region. So you wouldn't expect patients who are in bed to show much ankle edema because they're likely to have it in their dependent parts. And the most dependent part in bed is the lumbosacral region. And so the major feature of patients with right ventricular failure is systemic venous congestion and peripheral edema. And now that we come and talk about congestive heart failure, and as I said to you, this is what happens, as in most cases, both hearts fail together. We put the major features of left and right ventricular failure together and say patients have systemic venous congestion and peripheral edema, and they have dyspnea due to pulmonary edema. And congestive cardiac failure is an extremely common medical condition. Many, many hundreds and thousands of patients in the United Kingdom alone will develop it to one degree or other. Many elderly patients will develop heart failure. 